Praise the Lord. This is Brother Parrot again coming to you with a great Word of God Bible study. And we hope that something we say today might be a blessing to you. If you remember the last tape we left off that uh, the actual offering of Isaac on the Mount Moriah as a burnt offering unto the Lord, which the Lord came up on the scene and spared Isaac. He said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, uh, here I am, Lord. He said, because you've not withheld your son, your only son from me, I will blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven. And as the sea sandwiches up on the seashore, innumerable, and we're going to continue our study today, uh, giving a sort of a, a resemblance between Abraham and Isaac and Eliezer as uh, the actual New Testament as God himself sending the Lamb of God, the Son of Man, the Son of God into the world to save sinners. And we'd like to give you some sort of parallels and uh, some similarities between these two stories. Abraham is the type of God, the Father, the great eternal spirit, who made a sacrifice for his son. Both, both had a beloved son. In Matthew 3.17, when Jesus Christ was baptized, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God like a dove. And uh, he heard a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And John the Baptist heard this voice. And then in John chapter 17, verse 5, Peter, James, and John heard the same voice that said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Both were born miraculously. Miraculously, and If you'll notice, Sarah and Abraham were real old when Isaac was actually born unto them. And... Uh, it was a miraculous thing that for an old man that old and an old lady to actually have a child. And the same thing with our Lord Jesus Christ. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. And then the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. And he said, told Joseph, he said, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the one who begat the Son of God through a miraculous birth. And uh, Mother Mary actually had a child, and she had not ever had uh, a relationship with a male. Both had willing sons. If you'll notice that uh, Jesus said, I... Don't you don't take my life from me, he said, but I'll lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. And when Abraham took Isaac up to the mountain of Moriah, Isaac could have probably overpowered his father. And Isaac was pretty old at the time, a pretty old son, and uh, he could have overpowered poor old Abraham, but instead he gave himself to the will of God and his father Abraham. And the same thing happened with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He said, when he was in the garden of Gethsemane praying, he said, he prayed until his sweat became as great drops of blood falling to the earth. And he said, oh, my father, if it be willing, if you're willing, let this cup or this suffering pass from me that I don't have to die. But nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And the same thing happened with the submissiveness of Isaac unto his father Abraham. You can read the scriptures in John 10 verse 18 concerning the willingness of Jesus Christ. Both offered up their son. John 3.16, a very familiar passage. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and according to many scholars the mountain one of the mountains in Moriah was Calvary and Isaac being offered up on Mount Calvary uh, is a very perfect picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ giving up his life on the Mount Calvary both received their sons back with great joy 
you'll notice, Jesus said, Glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. And Jesus was full of joy. The scripture said he rejoiced in spirit. And God, when Jesus was returned back into the foreknowledge of God's plan and returned back to heaven, there was great joy in the spirit of God because he had made himself a perfect sacrifice. Offerings and sacrifices thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Psalm 27, verse 7 through 10. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou said, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Let thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. That's Psalm 24, verse 7 through 10. Some believe this psalm refers to the Lord Jesus coming back to the glory of heaven after his death and resurrection. Both made careful preparations for their son's wedding. In Genesis 24, Abraham sends his trusted servant out to find the bride for Isaac. He sends Eliezer of Damascus out to try to find a wife for the son Isaac. In the New Testament, we read, of course, of the Heavenly Father's preparation for the bride, the Lamb's wife, which hath made herself ready. In Revelation 19, verse 7. Matthew chapter 22 gives us a perfect picture of the Spirit of God actually making a marriage for the Son of God and sending out a great invitation to the Israeli people. Matthew chapter 22, starting at verse 1. And Jesus again spake unto them, again by parables and said the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which made a marriage for his son now this is the spirit of god actually making a marriage for the son of god and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come these servants here are the prophets and also the apostles they were sent to the jews the prophets and they uh, would not hear the great invitation to come to the wedding and again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatling are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, or the prophets, now we're talking about the Jews here, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. And this is a prophecy concerning the actual destruction that took place in Jerusalem by Titus and the Roman armies in 70 A.D. Then saith he unto his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which are bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they could found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the guests came in, the king came in to see the guests. He saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he cast this man that didn't have a wedding garment out into outer darkness. And he said, Go into the hedges and highways and so forth and compel them that, uh, to come in to the wedding. God so graciously, after Israel said, His blood be upon us and upon our children, God so graciously turned to us Gentiles and gave us a chance for eternal life. And aren't you glad of that today? The angel of the Lord again announces the features of the Abrahamic covenant. Upon returning from home, Abraham learns a message has arrived bringing him to date concerning his brother Nahor, whom he apparently had not seen since leaving Ur of Chaldea. Nahor had moved into Haran, and God had blessed him and his wife Milcah with eight sons. The fifth son, Bethuel, would become important in the biblical record. 
for he had a daughter named Rebekah and a son named Laban. Rebekah would, of course, later marry Isaac, and Laban's daughters, Rachel and Leah, were to be Jacob's wives. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 19 through 24, which we will read. Genesis chapter 22, verse 19 through 24. First chapter 22 speaks of concerning Isaac, of course, and his being offered up. But verse 19 through 24 says, So Abram returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abram dwelt at Beersheba. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Huz is firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Camuel the father of Aram, and Chizad, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Jip, Jitlap, and Bethuel, and Bethuel begat Rebekah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Ruma. She also bare Teba, and Geham, and Thaesh, and Maacah. Okay. His cave, chapter 23, verse 1 through 20. And Sarah was a hundred and seven and twenty years old, and these were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kerjath Arba, the name same as Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my lord, thou art a mighty prince among us, in the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead. What none of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth, and he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me, and entreat for me to Ephron the son of Zoar, so that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field, for as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. And Ephraim dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephraim the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went in at the gate of his city, saying, Nay, my lord, hear me. The field I give thee, and the cave that is therein I give it thee. In the presence of the sons of my people give I it thee, bury thy dead. And Abraham bowed himself before the people of the land, and he spake unto Ephraim in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, hear me. I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephraim answered Abraham, and saying unto him, My lord, hearken unto me. The land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? Bury therefore thy dead. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephraim, and Abraham weighed to Ephraim the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. And the field of Ephraim, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field, and the cave, which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all the borders bound about, were made sure, unto Abraham for possession in the presence of the children of Heth, before all that went in at the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah his wife in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth. Sarah died at the age of 127. There are those today who would advocate the adoration of Mary, but in the New Testament it is the life of Sarah that is called to our attention. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 6 speaks concerning this. Sarah was uh, a very, very honorable woman. And uh, 
she is praised very highly because of her humility and her obedience unto Abraham and her adoration and respect for her husband. First Peter chapter 3 verse 1 through 6 likewise you wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any obey not the word they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting of hair and a wearing of gold or a putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. So you see, Sarah was the one who was spoken of real highly as far as respect and adoration in the New Testament. Abraham buys a cave of Machpelah for 400 pieces of silver and buries his wife there. Later he became, he himself would be laid to rest in the same cave, Machpelah. His command, chapter 24, verse 1 through 67. Abram was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abram said unto his eldest servant of his house, now this was Eliezer, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my sons or the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Now, God didn't want his people to mix with the Canaanite people because they were so wicked. And uh, Abraham uh, wanted Eliezer to go amongst his uh, kin people to find a wife for Isaac of the same type of bloodline. But thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son, son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto the land, this land. Must I needs bring thy son again into the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred and which spake unto me and that swear unto me saying unto thy seed will I give this land he shall send his angel before thee and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. When God goes before you to do something and God puts his hand upon it you can rest assured without a shadow of a doubt that God will drive back all the enemies. He will take care of you. He will put uh, meat up on your table. You can acknowledge his hand of blessing up on you and you will have peace from God. When God fights your battles, I promise you that you will always be on the winning side. So when you feel the hand of God leading you, don't be afraid to step out because God's walking before you to prepare the way before you. And if a woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear to him, say, concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia and to the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the saint, the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink and I will Give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and therefore shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abram's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up.
And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher under her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of a half a shekel weight and two bracelets for the hands of, of ten shekels weight of gold for her hands and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, Moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough, and room to lodge him. And the man bowed down his head, and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban. He's a very important figure in these stories also. And Laban ran out to the man to the well. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and the bracelets upon his sister's hands. And when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord. Wherefore standest thou without, for I have prepared the house and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he ungirded his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told my errand. And he said, Speak on. Isn't that just like someone dedicated to God? When you know that you're doing the will of God, when you know that the hand of God is moving and you feel the blessings of God, you're not so much as worried about food or anything else. The only thing that really, really concerns you is feeling and knowing without a shadow of a doubt that God is with you and that you're doing what he wants you to do. And he said, I am Abraham's servant, and the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and he hath given him flocks and herds, and silver and gold, and manservants and maidservants, and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell, but thou shalt go unto my father's house and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Prayer adventure, the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this my oath when thou comest to my kindred, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the well, and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she said to me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out from my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder. And she went down into the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milka bare unto him. And I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son.
And now, if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee good or bad. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning. And he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at least ten. Then after that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Now this just like us, when God sends the great Spirit of God to us, beckoning us to come to the marriage. This is another uh, similarity that we spoke of a few minutes ago. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, Jesus said. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And when the Holy Ghost deals with us, and beckons us to come, and get ready to meet Jesus Christ as his great bride, we need to be like this little girl Rebecca here. And we need to say, I will go. If you be willing and obedient, God said, you shall eat the good of the land. And they sent away Rebekah, her, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose, and her damsels, and they rode up on the camels, and followed the man. And the servant took Rebekah, and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well Lehiroi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening tide, and he lifted up his eyes, and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel, for she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. And she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Abraham commands his trusted servant, Eliezer to go to Haran to choose a wife for Isaac. Upon reaching his destination, the servant kneels down beside the city and outside the city and prays for wisdom. This is one of the most remarkable prayers in all the Bible, not only because of its great faith, but because it was answered even before the prayer was finished. The servant asks God, how to show which girl he desired for Isaac by causing her to offer both him and the thirsty camels some water. Note the results. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out who was born to Bethuel and Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher up on her shoulder. Rebekah unknowingly fulfills his prayer by offering water both to the servant and his camels. The servant is introduced to Rebekah's mother and her brother Laban. He informs them of his mission and also of the amazing answer to his prayer. Rebekah agrees to go with the servant and becomes Isaac's wife. Isaac anxiously awaits his bride in a field near Hebron. They become husband and wife. This is one of the great typical patterns in all the Bible. And Rebecca is definitely a perfect picture of the church. Before anyone can enter God's true church, or he or she must first favorably answer the question of the father's servants. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Back chapter 24, verse 58. His Keturah. 
chapter 25, verse 1 through 6. And notice Abraham gets married again after Sarah dies. Then a again Abram took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bare unto him, she bare him Zimram and Jokshan and Medan and Midian and Ishbak and Shua. And Jokshan begat Sheba and Dedan. And the sons of Dedan were Ashuram and Lestushim and Laubim. And the sons of Midian, Ephah and Ephor, Hanok, and Abida, and Aldea, all these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from his son Isaac, Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And these, okay, and that's up through verse says his, his Keturah. Abraham marries a woman named Keturah who bears him six sons. The most important son was Midian, the fourth boy, who became the father of the Midianites. This nation would later cause Israel much grief. His city, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 through 10, and chapter 25, verse 7 through 10. We're going to read that. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived, a hundred, three score, and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre. The field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth, there was Abraham buried in Sarah, his wife. Okay, his city, Hebrews chapter 8, chapter 11, I'm sorry. Chapter 11, verse 8 through 10. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. These are the days of the years for Abraham's life, which he lived, and 103 score and 15 years. And Abraham gave up the ghost and was buried and died in a good old age, an old man and full of the years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephraim, the son of Zohar the Hittite, which is before Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth. There was Abraham buried in Sarah, his wife. 25, verse 7 through 10. All right. Isaac is the next uh, great patriarch that we will study. And it's Genesis chapter 25 through chapter 27. Isaac has been described as the mediocre son of a great father, Abraham, and the mediocre father of a great son, Jacob. The main action of his life occurs at the falling five places on a mountain, by a field alongside some desert wells, in a Philistine apartment, and at a supper table. On a Jerusalem mountain, as we just read, uh, his main uh, lifestyle there, his main great thing that he did was offered himself willingly into the hands of his father Abraham when he was about to offer him up on one of the mountains in the land of Moriah. The submissive son, Isaac Meekly, submits to being used as a burnt offering. Then, by Hebron field, Genesis 24, verse 61 through 67, 25, 9 through 11, and then verse 19 through 26. And these are the generations of Isaac, 
Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac was forty years old when he took but Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel the Syrian, and Paden Aram, the sister to Laban the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau, and after that came his brother out. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. All right. He meets Rebekah for the first time, as we read a while ago in Genesis 26, verse 61 through 67. He and Ishmael, his brother, bear their father. We just read that in Genesis 25, verse 9. Abraham lived 38 years after the death of Sarah. Ishmael dies at the age of 137, Genesis 25, verse 17. And these are the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years. And he gave up the ghost and died and was gathered unto his people. Isaac prayed that God would give him and his wife children. Chapter 25, verse 21. This is the second of five recorded biblical prayers for a child. Note Abraham's prayer in Genesis 15, 2. Isaac's prayer. Genesis 25, 21. Rachel's prayer. Genesis 30, verse 1 and verse 22. Hannah's prayer. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10. And then chapter 11. I mean, in verse 11. And then chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. Zechariah's prayer in the New Testament. Luke chapter 1, verse 5 through 7. And verse 13 through 17. Rebecca gives birth to twin boys. And they are named Esau and Jacob. In a Philistine home, chapter 26, verse 1 through 11. Uh, there was famine in the land. And beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and, statutes and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Okay, and he's a Philistine home, a copycat. Isaac repeats the sin of his father many years back. And you can see this uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There's no temptation taking you such as common to man, the scripture says. But God is faithful. Who will will the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it? He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. In the time of famine, he forsakes Palestine and moves into the Philistine area as Abraham had once gone to Egypt. He lies to King Abimelech concerning Rebekah, saying she is his sister. Abimelech discovers the truth of the matter and reproves a totally embarrassed Isaac about lying. In spite of his carnality, God reaffirms the Abrahamic covenant to Isaac and blesses him greatly in the material things. Alongside some desert wells, chapter 26, verse 12 through 33, the willing worker, chapter 26, verse 12 through 23, then Isaac sold in that land, Let me read this before I do that. I want you to have the Word of God in you 
And I want you to hear the scriptures. We gave the comments there about him lying to Abimelech like his father uh, Abraham had done. But I want to read this. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister. This is chapter 26, starting at verse 7 and going through verse 11. And for he feared to say, She is my wife, lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, took, king of Philistia, took, looked out of a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife, and how saidst thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, What is this that thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lied with thy wife, and that thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that toucheth this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in that land, and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. All right, this is uh, starting here. The Philistines soon became jealous of his great success and retaliated by filling up with earth some old wells once dug by his father. Abraham Isaac... Isaac spends a great deal of time clearing the debris from these clogged water holes. The young minister of God can derive some profitable lessons from these verses. Throughout history, our spiritual forefathers had, with patience and pleasure, dug down and in deep into the Word of God and beautifully exposed those clear, fresh, cold water wells of the virgin birth, the sinless life of Christ the death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension, and future coming of Jesus Christ. But of late, these wells have been clogged in the minds of many because of the hateful actions of false critics. Therefore, the main job of the young man of God today is to clean out these wells that the life-giving fluids may again flow and satisfy the parched hearts of humanity. You know, many times that even in churches, the uh, Preachers can come in and, and all types of things can happen and people can get uh, distorted in their mind and their thinking and their heart. They may still hold to some of the great doctrines of the Bible, but their heart is not refreshed and happy with the Spirit of God. And it's up to us to try to really dig deep into the hearts of people and try to bless them and teach them and nourish them and give them the great things of the Word of God and not tear them down. We're going to read here in the 26th chapter. We hadn't completed this yet in chapter 26, verse 12 through 33. Then we'll comment some more on it. Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. For all the wells that his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them up and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto him, Isaac, go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence, and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names of, by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, and found there a well of springing water, and the herdman of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdman, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well, and strove with that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence, and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth, and he said, For now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for thy, my servant Abraham's sake. 
And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there and dwelt. And there Isaac's servants did dig the well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar and Ahuzath, one of his friends, and Phicol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come you to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee, and we said, Lest there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that thou wilt not that will do unto us no hurt, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. And he made a feast, and they did eat and drink, and they rose up betimes in the morning, and swear one to another. And Isaac went, sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And he came, came to pass, the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged, and said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba, therefore the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. And Esau was forty years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri the Hittite, and Bashamath, the daughter of Elam the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and unto Rebekah. <laughs> which were a grief of mine to Isaac and unto Rebekah. Isaac did once his father as as did once his father Abraham enters into a non aggressive pact with King Abimelech. Read Proverbs sixteen seven. God appears to Isaac again, and Isaac and Rebekah are grieved over the marriage of Esau, who at forty years of age picks a pagan girl for his wife. Genesis twenty six verse thirty four and thirty five. Now, I'd like to turn to this chapter here in Genesis chapter 26 again. And I'd like to see and comment here about uh, these wells here that he dug. Okay, and he removed from thence. They dig uh, a well, and he called the name of it Esek. And Esek in the Hebrew means contention or strife and then they said they strove again and, and digged another well and they called it sitna and sitna mean, means opposition or accusation okay and then they moved and drove strove for another well and and now the the next well that they actually dug they didn't strive for that and the meaning of Rehoboth is Room, and it was about 20 miles southeast of Beersheba in a fertile valley. The site is marked by extensive ruins and deep wells. All right, the Abrahamic covenant. Okay, Isaac's next next title is. Uh, his next uh, topic is at a supper table. At a supper table, the frustrated father. Genesis chapter 27, verse 1 through 46. Chapter 27, verse 1 through 46. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here am I the stolen blessing, the charge to Esau. And he said, Behold now, I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, the, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out into the field and take some venison, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, and that my soul may bless thee before I die. Then Rebecca has a little plot against this because she overhears it. And Rebecca heard when, she heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebecca spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go not to the flock and fetch, 
go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goat, and I will make them savory meat for thy father such as he loveth, and thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Up on me be that curse, my son, only obey my voice, and go and fetch him. The plot executed. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck, and she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. Orientals were fine, fond, very fond of highly seasoned food, salt, spices, onions, garlic, and saffron, mint, and various other herbs were used to flavor foods. And he came into his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Who, who, here I am. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thou firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, and sit and eat my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly? And he said, Because my son, and he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come here, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. The only case recorded in the scripture where a man depended upon feelings and he was deceived. The lesson to Christians is clear. Isaac must have had a sickness which affected his eyes and made him think he was doing, going to die. He recovered, however, and saw Jacob on his return from Paden Aram about 20 years later. He died just 10 years before Jacob went into Egypt. Okay. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his brother Esau's hands, and so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. The plot was very successful. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field, which the Lord hath blessed. Raiment in the east marked the social rank and position of the wearer. The firstborn had an official garment as the priest and head of the house. However, this garment put upon Jacob was one which had the smell of the field upon it to make the deception more complete. It was a perfect deception except the voice. Even God was aff confirmed, affirmed as aiding him to finding the meat sooner than it would be, could be expected. This feature is the worst part of it about it and shows the nature of daring of the whole falsehood. God certainly was not a party to these plots and sin. And he came near and smelled him and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, The smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord hath blessed. Isn't that something? Therefore God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. It predicted that Jacob would be blessed above Esau in material and spiritual things. This is the first prophecy, prophecy of Isaac the prophet. Therefore God gave thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of 
the earth in plenty of coin and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And then the plot is discovered. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out of his presence the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his brother came in from the hunting and he also had made savory meat and brought it into his father and said unto his father let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me and Isaac his father said unto him who art thou and he said I am thy firstborn Esau and Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said who where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me and I have eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him, yea, and he shall be blessed. Esau's unveiling remorse. Hebrews 12, 17 said, Esau sought repentance carefully with tears, but he found no space for repentance. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety, and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto him, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, and all his brethren have I given him for servants. And with corn and wine have I sustained him, and what shall I do unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? And bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Hallelujah. Hmm. Lifted up his voice and wept. All right. The deception was finally found out. Chapter 27. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Chapter 27. Rebecca overhears Isaac's plans to owe bestow the patriarchal blessing upon Esau. She immediately plots with Jacob to obtain this for him. Isaac is deceived by Jacob and he receives that blessing meant for Esau. Esau discovers the trickery and vows revenge. The question may be raised as to why Esau, who had despised his birthright, now is so concerned with the blessing. The answer seems to very be in the very nature of the two. As we have previously noted, Esau was not interested at all in assuming the spiritual responsibilities of the birthright, but the blessing was something different, for it carried with it a good and wholesome prophecy concerning the future. The Dreaming Pilgrim, chapter 28, verse 1 through 22. The Dreaming Pilgrim. And Isaac... I want to read this right here before we go on. Isaac and he answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be with the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword thou shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have dominion, the dominion thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And then Esau's plot against Jacob. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Esau said in his heart, The days of the mourning of, for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. This attitude, this alludes to the formal ceremony mourning from the dead, which lasted seven to seventy days. The plot discovered. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah, and she sent and called Jacob unto her younger son, and said unto him, Behold thy brother Esau, 
as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Jacob's plan, Rebekah's plan to save Jacob. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, arise and flee to Laban thy brother to Haran, and tarry with him a few days, and till thy brother's fury turn away, till thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him, then I will sin, and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived of you both in one day? She never saw Jacob again, this promise she couldn't fulfill. Perhaps it was never safe to bring him back, for Esau seemed to have kept his hatred until Jacob prayed in all seriousness, and God changed him in Genesis chapter 32, verse 6 to 33, 17. Okay, and then we're going to talk about the dreaming pilgrim now. Genesis chapter 28, verse 1 through 22. The dreaming pilgrim. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Paden Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Abrahamic covenant confirmed in Jacob Genesis 12 1 then almighty God almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham then Jacob escapes from Esau and Isaac sent away Jacob and he went to Paden Aram unto Laban, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob and Esau's mother. Esau's consolatory act. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Paden Aram to take him away from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and was gone to Paden Aram, and Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then he went Esau into Ishmael, and took unto him the wife which he had, uh, Maelath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajah, to be his wife. The history of Jacob, outlined to 37, Jacob's first vision, Abrahamic covenant confirmed. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lifted up, lighted up on a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, the God of Isaac. The land wherein thou liest to thee will I give it unto thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the south, east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil up on the top of it. And then he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me the bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. I will surely give a tenth unto thee. Bethel means house of God. All right. 
the dreaming pilgrim. Jacob leaves Beersheba and starts toward Haran. After a long and hard journey, he arrives at Bethel, some 40 miles from Beersheba. Using a stone for a pillow, Jacob soon falls into an exhausted sleep. And as he sleeps, he dreams, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. Behold, the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. According to Hebrews 1.14, angels are the ministering spirits to the heirs of salvation. Said all are they not all ministering spirits sent forth the minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And that's Hebrews one fourteen. Jacob's grandfather Abraham had received their blessed ministry. Genesis eighteen one through sixteen as and has had Lot in Genesis nineteen verse one. You know, Abraham had the angels came to him and ministered unto him and told him he was going to have a son and that he uh, then he told him about things that was going to happen down in Sodom and Gomorrah and where Abraham prayed and then down in Sodom and Gomorrah before Lot was about ready to leave, the angels came and helped him and his wife and two daughters uh, leave the city, of which of course we know his wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. The top of this ladder, Jacob sees the presence of God himself, and for the first time hears the Lord's voice confirming to him the Abrahamic covenant. Genesis 28, 1 through 15. Especially thrilling are the words, I will not leave thee, in verse 15. Most precious of all promises is that of the presence of the Lord. It was made here to Jacob in pure grace, to Moses for all the people before they crossed the Jordan with Joshua in Deuteronomy 36, 1 verse 6, to Joshua as he assumed leadership and faced the battle in Joshua 1 verse 5 and 8, and to Solomon for the building of the temple in 1 Chronicles 28 verse 20. It was made to the disciples just before the Lord ascended into heaven in Matthew 28 20 and confirmed to us here today in Hebrews 13 verse 5 and 6. Jacob awakens and vows his vow in Genesis 28 verse 20 through 22 that we just read about paying his tithes to the Lord if the Lord would bring him back to his father's land and bless him and feed him. In spite of the rather pitiful conditions of the carnal, this carnal prayer, a sovereign God graciously chose to answer it. The love struck suitor, Genesis chapter 1, 29 rather, verse 1 through 20. Then Jacob went on his journey. This is Jacob and Haran. And came into the land of the people of the east, and looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they one watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth, and thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot until the flocks be gathered, all the flocks be gathered together, and all from and till they roll the stone away from the well's mouth, and then we water the sheep. And while he was yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. And it came to pass, when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him into his house. And he told Laban all these things. And, Abraham, and Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. The servitude, servitude to Laban, 30, verse 27, a seven years for Rachel. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, thou shouldest 
Shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Tender-eyed means translated tender or soft and weak. It could mean any one of these. Various translations read no sparkle, tender, weak, and timid. And it's, but it says that Rachel's eyes, Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. A beautiful in shape, countenance, features, and appearance. She was lively, gay, and vivacious, and extremely attractive. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And now he's deceived and beat his own game for deceiving his father Isaac. He's a frustrated family man now. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for the days my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him. And he went in unto her. And Jacob and Laban gave unto his daughter Leah, Zilpah, his maid, for an handmaid. And uh, Zilpah, she becomes the mother of Gad and Asher. Slaves given to daughters at marriages were the particularly property of the wife and over them, the husband had no right or power. It can, and it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? Wherefore hast thou beguiled me? The frustrated family man. We're reading... Uh, Still reading here, his love struck suitor in the first, the frustrated family man. And he said, and Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. Glory to God. Bilhah. She became the mother of Dan and Naphtali. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. The first maternity race, Jacob's family at Haran. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, called his name Reuben. Reuben means, Behold, a son, for Jehovah hath looked upon my affliction of being less loved by my husband than Rachel. And for she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction, now therefore my husband will love me. The birth of Simeon. And she conceived again and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this also. And she called his name Simeon. Simeon means hearing. Because the Lord had heard that I had been preferred less than Rachel. The birth of Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. Levi means joined. The birth of Judah. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Now therefore will I... Praise the Lord, therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. And the name Judah means praise. Rachel's envy of Le Leah. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children lest I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. And he said, Am I in God's stead who hath withheld thee from the fruit of the womb? Rachel's policy. 
And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in, in unto her, and the birth of Dan. And Bilhah conceived, and she bare Jacob a son. And Jacob said, Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son, therefore called she his name Dan. And of course the name Dan means judging. The birth of Naphtali. And Bilhah Rachel's maid conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. Naphtali means wrestling. Leah's policy, the birth of Gad. And when Leah saw that the that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Jacob to wife. And Zilpah Leah's maid bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, A troop cometh. And she called his name Gad. And the word Gad means a troop or an army. The birth of Asher. And Zilpah Leah's maid bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And the name Asher means happiness or blessedness. Jacob hired for mandrakes. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes. Now mandrakes is a lettuce-like plant of dark green color with purple flowers and fruit about the size of a small apple, red and of an uh, agreeable, has an agreeable odor, much used in so-called love potions. It was believed that conception was ensured by eating it. This is, of course, naturally 30, verse 14 through 16. Arabs later called the fruit apples of Satan for some unknown reason. Rachel fancied she needed some mandrakes more than Leah, who was blessed with sons after this event. God, no doubt, made her fruitful as an added lesson to Rachel, whose mind was more or less occupied with this superstition. Leah became fruitful without mandrakes, while Rachel was not fruitful by eating them and having faith in the superstition. And Rachel and Reuben went into the days of went in the days of wheat harvest, found mandrakes in the field, and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said unto Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband, and wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob a fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Issachar means my life, or my hire, rather, or reward. My hire or my reward is what Issachar means. The birth of Zebulun and Dinah. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. She called his name Zebulun. Zebulun means dwelling or cohabitation. And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. Afterward evidently means that in the next year she had Dinah. Dinah means vindicated. Suggestion that Leah believed God was vindicating her in the struggle with Rachel over the affections of Jacob. The birth of Joseph. And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph. Called his name Joseph. The name Joseph means adding. And she and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. Now we're going to study uh, in just a few moments the uh, enterprising employee where he's working for Laban, his uncle. Frustrated 
family man we were just been studying. Jacob is deceived on his wedding night by a crafty Laban who had secretly substituted his oldest girl named Leah in the place of Rachel, his youngest. Uh, Genesis 29, 16 through 24. Jacob the deceiver is now himself deceived. Seems like what goes around comes around. Jacob is furious but agrees to work another seven years for Rachel without pay. He is, however, permitted to marry her within a week. Genesis 29, 25 through 30. Jacob has now has two wives and would gather two more as Leah and Rachel each present him their personal handmaidens for children bearing childbearing purposes. The four women will bear Jacob twelve sons and one daughter from Leah, Reuben, C.S. son, his first son, 2932. Number two, Simeon, hearing, as we studied, his second son, 2933. Levi, joined, the third son, 2934. Judah, praise, the fourth son, 2935. Issachar, he brings wages, his ninth son, 3018. Zebulun, dwelling, his tenth son, 3020. And then from Bilhah, Rachel's handmaiden, Dan, to judge, her fifth son, his fifth son, Genesis 30, verse 6. Naphtali, wrestling, his sixth son, 30, verse 8. From Zilpah, Leah's handmaiden. Gad, troop, his seventh son, 30, verse 11. Asher, gladness, his eighth son, 30, verse 13. And then from Rachel, Joseph's adding, is what his name means, as we studied. His eleventh son, 30, verse 24. And then Benjamin, son of my right hand, his twelfth son, in 35, verse 18. The following interesting conclusions may be drawn at this point. Half of Jacob's sons were born to a wife, Leah. He had no intention or knowledge of marrying. This included Levi, from which tribe all the priests would eventually come, Judah, from which tribe the Lord Jesus would eventually come, Leah gave Jacob his only recorded daughter, whose name was Dinah, Chapter 30, verse 21. Rachel bore him two, his two final, his son, Rachel bore him his two final and favorite, favorite sons. Joseph would later, of course, become the most famous of all. After her first four children, Leah became temporarily barren in attempt to stimulate her womb by eating some mandrakes, a leafy plant, sometimes referred to as the love apples, or eaten by peasant women in the Near East in the belief that this would aid them in becoming pregnant. Leah was now attempting to bear children with the aid of an artificial method. The mandrake fruit as used here serves as an example of the various artificial and Christ dishonoring methods used by some to fill the house of God such as church bazaars, bingo parties, rock and roll sessions, etc. Earthly children are only born when the bride comes into contact with her bridegroom so it is with souls. When the bride prays Rachel's prayer, give me children or else I'll die, 30 verse 1, the bridegroom will bless. Hallelujah. The enterprising employee, employee 3025 through 3155. And Jacob wants to go home here. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said unto Laban, Send me away that I may go into my own country and to my own place and into my own country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go, for thou knowest my service which I have done thee. Servitude to Laban. Jacob's new contract. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. And he said, Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. Thou knowest how I have served with thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hast before I came, and it is now increased into a multitude. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming, and now when shall I? I provide for my own house also. And he said, What shall I give thee? And Jacob said, Thou shalt not give me anything. If thou wilt do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. 
I will pass through thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come, when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted stolen with me. And Laban said, Behold, I would it might be according to thy word. Jacob's new starting point. And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straked and spotted, and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them to the hand of his sons. And he set three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks, tampering with nature. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of hazel and chestnut tree, and peeled white strakes in them, and made the white appear with which was in the rod. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks of the gutters, in the gutters of the watering cross, when the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods, and brought forth cattle, ring straked, sped, gold, and spotted. And Jacob did separate the lambs, and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring straked, and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves, and put them not into Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rod before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle which were feeble, he put them not in, so the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle, and manservants and men servants and camels and asses. And we're still reading here. We're going to read start at chapter, that was the conclusion of chapter 30. Now chapter 31 uh, through 55, and that... Uh, is actually the complete chapter there. We are speaking of the enterprising employee because Jacob is down there really working hard for his uncle Laban or his cousin or whatever he was. And uh, <laughs> he's sure cheating old Jacob out of a lot of things here, trying to take and change his wages and get him to work for nothing. And The Lord is blessing Jacob in his own way. Jealousy of Laban's sons. And he heard the words of Laban's son, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, and behold, it was not toward him as before. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I... See your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before, but the God of my father hath been with me, and ye know that with all my power I have served your father, and your father hath deceived me, and changed my wages ten times, but God suffered him not to hurt me. He, if he thus said, The speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled, and if the, he said thus, the ring strake shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring strake. Thus God hath taken away the cattle of your father and has and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straked and speckled and grizzled. The call back to Canaan. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. Him, here am I. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see. All the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise and get thee in, out of from this land, and return into the land of thy kindred. Jacob's flight. And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Are we not counted for him of him strangers? For he has sold us and has quite devoured also our money. For all the riches which God had taken from our father, that is ours and our father's, 
and our children. Now then, whatsoever God has said unto thee, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels. And he carried away all the cattle and all the, his goods, which he had, he had gotten, the cattle of the getting, which he had gotten in Paden Aram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And Jacob stole away unawares to Laban and the Syrian, in that he told him not that he fled. So he fled with all that he had, and rose up and passed over the river, and set his face toward the Mount Gilead. Jacob pursued by Laban. And it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob was fled, and he took his brethren with him and pursued after him seven days' journey, and they overtook him in the Mount Gilead. God protects Jacob. And God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream by night and said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to Jacob, either good or bad. Then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and Laban with his brethren pitched in the mount of Gilead. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done that thou hast stolen away unawares to me, and carried away my daughters and as captives taken with the sword? Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly, and steal away from me, and didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth, and with songs, and with tablets, and with a harp? And hast su not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters, and hast now thou hast now done foolishly in so doing. It is in the power of my hand to do thee do you hurt. But the God of your father spake unto me yesternight, saying, Take thou heed that thou speak not to Jacob either good or bad. Accusation and search. And now, though thou wouldest needs be gone, because thou so longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Peradventure thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me. With whomsoever thou findest thy God, let him not live. Before our brethren discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went near to Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, and into the two maidservants' tents, but he found them not. Then when he out of Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken those images and put them in the camel's furniture and sat upon them. And Laban searched all the tent and found them not. And she said to her father, Let it not displease my Lord that I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon me. And he searched but found not the images. Jacob argues with Laban. And Jacob was wroth and chose with Laban. And Jacob answered and said to him, Laban, what is thy trespass? What is my sin that thou hast so hotly pursued after me? Wherefore hast thou searched of all my stuff, and what hast thou found of all thy household stuff? Set it before here before my brethren and thy brethren, that they may judge betwixt us both. This twenty years have I been with thee. Thy ewes and thy she-goats have not cast away their young. And the rams of thy flock have I not eaten? That which was torn of beast I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it, and my hand didst not thou require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was in the day, the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in thy house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle. Thou hast changed my wages ten times. Except the God of my father, the God of Abram, and the fear of Isaac had been with me, surely thou hast set me, sent me away now empty. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked thee yesternight. The covenant of peace. And Laban answered and said unto Jacob, These daughters are my daughters, and these children are my children, and these cattle are my cattle, and all that thou seest is mine. And what can I do this day unto these my daughters, or unto their children which they have borne? Now therefore come thou, and let us make a covenant, I and thou, and let it be for a witness betwixt, between me and thee. And Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. And Jacob said unto his brethren, Gather stones, and they took stones, and make thee a heap. And they did eat there up on the heap. And Laban called it Jigar Sehadutha. Jigar Sehadutha. 
And the Hebrew means, uh, the called in means heap of witnesses. But Jacob called it Galilee. And uh, Galilee means heap of witness in the Hebrew. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Galilee and Mizpah. Mizpah means a beacon or watchtower, a place of separation. It was Laban's name for the monument, a place or a witness that the Lord would watch between them while absent from each other. It signified that neither people would pass this boundary line to make war on the other. History shows that this covenant was broken many times by both peoples. In the midst, before it said, The Lord watched between me and thee when we are absent one from another. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take daughters, no man is with thee besides my daughters. If thou shalt take wives besides my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness between me and thee. And Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold this pillar which I have cast betwixt me and thee. This heap be witness, and this pillar be a witness, that I will not pass over this heap to thee, and that thou shalt not pass over this heap or this pillar unto me for harm. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahor, and the God of their father judge betwixt us. And Jacob swear by the fear of his father Isaac, the feast and the parting. Then Jacob offered sacrifice upon the mount and called his brethren to eat bread. And they did eat bread and tarried all night in the mount. And early in the morning Laban rose up and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them. And Laban departed and returned unto his place. The Enterprising Employee After the birth of his children, Jacob wants to return home, but is persuaded by Laban to remain for a while. Genesis 30, verse 25 through 28. He agrees under the condition that he be allowed to keep all keep as his own all speckled or spotted goats and all black sheep. Genesis 30 verse 29 through 36. Jacob then attempts to increase the size of his herd by removing some of the bark from certain kinds of tree branches and placing them in that area used by the animals for mating purposes. Genesis 30, verse 37 through 39. After a period of six years, Jacob becomes a very wealthy man. Jacob is commanded by God to return to Palestine again. Genesis 30, verse 43 and 31, verse 3. Jacob quickly breaks camp and leaves for home without bothering to inform Laban. Genesis 31, verse 17 through 21. Laban, upon hearing of the flight three days later, sets out in the hot pursuit and catches up with them after a week's journey at Mount Gilead. God had already warned the angry father-in-law not to harm Jacob. Genesis 31, verse 22 through 25. Laban rebukes Jacob for sneaking off without saying goodbye and accuses him of stealing his household gods. 30, Genesis 31, verse 26 through 30. The New Schofield Bible offers the following co comment concerning these gods. This incident has long been a puzzle. Why was Laban so greatly concerned about recovering these images which Rachel had stolen? Attempting to recapture them, he concluded a conducted a long 275-mile expensive expedition. Excavations at Nusa in northern Mesopotamia in the region in which Laban lived shows that the possession of the household gods of the father-in-law by a son-in-law was legally acceptable as proof of the designation of that son-in-law as principal heir. It is, it, it is no wonder that Jacob was angry that he should be accused of such a deed and that the two men set up a boundary and promised not to cross it to injure one another. Jacob never made evil use of these images, which Rachel has stolen, but ordered that they should be buried at Shechem. Genesis 35, verse 22, verse 2 through 4. Jacob angrily denies stealing these images, is unaware of Rachel's actions, and directs a tirade against Laban, accusing him of grossly inconsistent and inhuman treatment during their 20-year employment relationship. Chapter 31, verse 36 through 42. These idols, hidden in Rachel's camel furniture, were never discovered. She remained seated during the search, saying, I cannot rise up before thee, for the custom of women is upon thee, me. Genesis 31, 35. 
At Laban's suggestion, the two men entered a covenant by building a pile of stones and calling it Mizpah, or the watchtower. Laban then added the words upon completion, The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. Genesis 31, 49. Dr. Donald Barnhouse writes, Careless reading of the Word of God has made this statement familiar to millions in a totally false application that it should be engraved on rings made the motto of a youth organization and used for a benediction to close a meeting is preposterous it did not stand for a blessing communion and fellowship but rather it indicates armistice separation menace and warning in effect the pillar of mizpah mean meant if you come over on my side of this line i'll kill you the covenant breaker would need god to take care of him because the other would shoot to kill the determined wrestler genesis 32 verse 1 through 33 verse 20 Genesis 32, verse 1. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Maenaim. Maenaim means two camps. The host of heaven met Jacob to assure him of the promise protection as he entered Canaan. They became visible as two hosts, one on each side of Jacob's company, or one band for each part of his family when they were divided. Jacob's reconciliation with Esau desired. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye break, speak unto my lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob saith, Thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now, and I have oxen and asses and flocks and men servants and women servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee with four hundred men with him. The prayer of distress. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and herds and the camels into two bands and said, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, the Lord which says unto me, Return to thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother and from the hand of, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And thou saidst, I will surely do thee good, and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. A present prepared. Proverbs 21, verse 14. Read that as a text. And he lodged there that same night and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau his brother. Two hundred she-goats and twenty he-goats, two hundred ewes and twenty rams, 30 milch camels with their colts, 40 kine, and 10 bulls, 20 she-asses, and 10 foals. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves, and said unto his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space betwixt drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau my brother meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob's. It is a present sent unto my lord Esau, and behold, also he is behind us. And so commanded he the second and the third, and all that followed the droves, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau when ye find him. And say ye moreover, Behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me, and afterward I will see his face peradventure, he will accept of me. So went the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night, and took his two wives, and his two women servants, and his eleven sons, and passed over the ford Jabbok. Passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over and sent over that he had. 
Jacob wrestles with God. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. I'd like to tell you, if I, if I could find it here, uh, the four Jabbok. A stream 65 miles long. It begins in the Haran Mountains and empties into Jordan about 30 miles below Lake Galilee. It was the boundary line between the kingdoms of Sihon and Og. In Joshua 12, verse 2, and Judges 11, verse 13 through 32. Afterward, it was the boundary between Reuben and Manasseh. Deuteronomy 3.16 and Joshua 12.2. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And of course, the name Israel means prince. All right. Uh, and Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, where Peniel means face of God. For I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved and he as he passed over Penuel the sun rose upon him and he halted upon his thigh and therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew of the thigh which shrank which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrank that shrank okay I'm going to look at something here and um uh, we're going to see what the actual, the name of Jacob means, the name Israel. Israel means from Sar, a prince, and Sarah, a princess, meaning prevailed or ruled as a prince, and El, God, strength, mighty, the almighty. It means a prince with God, soldier of God, God wrestling, or God's prince. For as a prince you have power with God and with men, and have prevailed. Isn't that beautiful? As a prince thou hast power with God and with men and hast prevailed. The determined wrestler. In uh, 33 verse 20, we're going to read down to that. Reconciliation effected. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau came and with him 400 men. And he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids. And he put the handmaids and their children foremost, and Leah and her children after, after and Rachel and Joseph hindermost. And he passed over before them and bowed himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children and said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children which God hath graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaidens came near, they and their children, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed themselves. And after came Joseph near and Rachel, and they bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou by all this dole which I met? And he said, These are to find grace in the sight of my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, Nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand, for therefore I have seen thy face as thou as though I had seen the face of God, and thou hast ple was pleased with me. Take, I pray thee, my blessing that is brought to thee, because God hath dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. And he urged him, and he took it. And he said, Let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go before thee. And he said unto him, My Lord knoweth that the children are tender, and that the flock and the herds with young are with me, and if men should overdrive them one day, all the flocks will die. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant, and I will lean on softly according as the cattle that goeth before me, and the children be able to endure until I come unto my Lord unto Mount Seir.
And Esau said, let me now leave with these some of the folk that are with me. And he said, what needeth it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to see her. Jacob settles in Canaan. Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built him a house and made booths for his cattle. Therefore the name of the place is called Booth for his cattle. Therefore the name of that place is called Succoth. And the word Succoth means Jacob built Succoth on the east of Jordan and the river Jabbok which flows into the Jordan from the east. And Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Paden Aram and pitched his tent before the city, and he bought a parcel of field, of a field where he had spread his tent, as the hand at the hand of the children of Hamor, children Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of silver. And he entered, and he erected there an altar, and he called it El Elohi Israel. El Elohi Israel. Okay, Hebrew is for God, the God of Israel. The enterprising employee, the determined wrestler. Jacob is again ministered to by the angels on his route homeward as he had been when leaving home some 20 years before. See Genesis 28 verse 12 and compare with 32 verse 1 and 2. Jacob here mentions for the first time in the Bible the armies of heaven. That is what he meant by the phrase God's host. This host is composed of angels. There are many instances in the scripture showing this divine action, army in action. A. Joshua was visited by the captain of this host, Joshua 5.14. Elisha and his young servant were reassured by this mighty army in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 13 through 17. The Savior announced to Peter that he would call upon the, this divine army he could have called upon this divine army to save him from the cross had he wanted to but thank God he did not choose to do so Matthew 26 verse 52 and 53 where he states he could easily call down 12 legions or 72,000 angels as David would write in Psalm 34 verse 7 the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them at this time he learns the terrifying news that Esau's brother was en route to meet him with 400 men. Jacob is petrified with fear. He immediately does three things. A. He divides his household into two groups saying, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, the other company which is left shall escape. Genesis 32 verse 8. He cries out to God in prayer, Genesis 32, verse 9 through 11. At this time, Jacob acknowledges, perhaps for the very first time, that I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast shown me unto thy servant, Genesis 32, verse 10. Paul would again testify to this truth in 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 through 15. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 through 15. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Okay. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Praise God. He sends out a, a bribe gift to Esau and consisting of 550 animals. Genesis 32, verse 13 through 21. There occurred that night by the river Jabbok one of the most mysterious and wondrous events in all the Bible. Genesis 32, verse 24 through 29. Whatsoever theology one may glean from these strange verses of God and man engaged in an all-night wrestling match, two facts clearly emerge. His name is changed from Jacob, the crooked heel catcher, 
to Israel, which signifies one who has power with God. Genesis 32, verse 28. He never walked the same after this soul-searching, soul-struggling session with God. Genesis 33, 32, verse 31 and 32. Afterward, Jacob called the name of this place Peniel, face of God. God had touched his heart at Bethel, but here at Peniel, God claimed his life. The former place saw his conversion and salvation, but this place witnessed his consecration and sanctification. The first had introduced him to the peace of God. The second freely gave him the peace of God. He now possessed not only life, but abundant life. See Romans 5, 1, Philippians 4, 7, St. John 10, 10, where it says, Thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Jacob, bowing and trembling, meets Esau. To his surprise and immense relief, Esau embraces him. 33, Genesis 33, 1 through 4. Esau wanted Jacob to accompany him to the land of Seir. This was the farthest thing from Jacob's mind, but instead of simply telling Esau this, he hid behind his children. My Lord knoweth that the children are tender, and the flocks and herds with young are with me, and if men should overdrive them one day, all the flock will die. Genesis 33, verse 13. Jacob promises, however, to meet him in Seir. That was, of course, a brazen lie. Jacob was headed for Sukkoth, which was northwest, while Seir was southeast. One wonders what Esau thought about Jacob's glowing testimony concerning God's grace when he learned his brother had once again deceived him. Genesis 33, 14 through 16. I want to read that. Let my Lord, I pray thee, pass over before his servant, and I will lead on softly according as the cattle that goeth before me, and the children be able to endure until I come unto my Lord and to see her. And Esau said, Let me now lead with thee some of the folk that are with me. And he said, What needeth it? Let me find grace in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way unto see her. The enraged father, Genesis 34, verse 1, and 38, 34, verse 1, and 38, verse 1 through 30. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. I'm going to read this, chapter 34, his enraged father. Over the sin of murder committed by Levi and Simeon. Genesis 4, 34, verse 1 through 31. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto his father Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. And now his sons were with the cattle in the field. And Jacob held his peace until they were come. This proposed union. And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had wrought folly in Israel in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Hamor communed with him, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray you give her him to wife, and make your marriage with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. And ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein, and get ye possessions therein. And Shechem said unto her, her father, and unto her brethren, Let me find grace in your eyes, and what ye shall say unto me, I will give. Ask me never so much dowry and gift, and I will give according as ye shall say unto me, but un give me the damsel to wife the deceitful dealings. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor, his father, deceitfully, and said, Because he had defiled Dinah, their sister. And they said unto him, We cannot do this thing, to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that were a reproach unto us. But in this will we consent unto you, if you will be as we be, 
that every male of you be circumcised, then will we give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters to us. We will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not hearken unto us to be circumcised, then will we take our daughter, and we will be gone. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. And the young man deferred not to do the thing, because he had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, came into the gate of their city and communed with them, men of the city, saying, These men are peaceable with us. Therefore let them dwell in the land and trade therein, for the land, behold, it is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only herein will the men consent unto us, for to dwell with us, to be one people, if every male among us be circumcised, as they are circumcised. Shall not their cattle and their substance and every beast of theirs be ours? Only let us consent unto them, and they dwell will dwell with us. And unto Hamor and unto Shechem his son hearkened all that went out and to the gate of his city, and every male was circumcised, and all that went out of the gate of his city. Vengeance executed. And it came to pass on the third day, when they were sore, that the two sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword, and came upon the city boldly, and slew all the males. And they slew Hamer and Shechem his son, with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah out of Shechem's house, and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. They took their sheep and their oxen and their asses and that which was in the city and that which was in the field, all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives. They took, took their captive and spoiled even all that was in the house. Jacob's fear and unbelief. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, Ye have troubled me to make me distinct among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I, being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, Should he deal with our sister? As with an harlot shall he deal with our sister? As with an harlot. Jacob the sin over, over the sin of murder committed by Levi and Simeon, the enraged father. Jacob allows his daughter Dinah to run loose, resulting in her being seduced by Shechem, the son of the king of Hamor of the Hivites. Jacob, like his father Isaac, had little idea what his children did or whom they saw. It was an accepted assumption among the Egyptians and Canaanites that unmarried and unattended women were legitimate prey. In Genesis 12:14 and 20, verse 2, and 26, verse 7. Dinah was approximately 14 years of age at this time. Shechem then act, determines to marry Dinah and ask Jacob for the necessary permission. In fact, the Hivite suggests to Jacob, Make your marriages with us, and take our daughters unto you, and ye shall dwell with us. The line of reasoning is, of course, one of Satan's favorite tactics. The Christian is urged to raise his tolerance level and lower his standards to appease his flesh and to obtain to abandon his faith. For the answer to this satanic suggestion, see First Corinthians chapter six, verse fifteen through twenty, second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen through eighteen. Dinah's brothers, inwardly boiling with anger, cruelly deceived Shechem by agreeing to his request with the stipulation that all male Hivites circumcise themselves. Genesis 34, 13 through 24. On the third day, when their wounds were sore and insensitive to every movement, Levi and Simeon walked boldly to the camp and slaughtered every male there, including Shechem and his father. Then they plundered the city, taking all that spoiled, including the widows and orphans. 34, verse 25 through 30 of Genesis. Jacob was furious and soundly rebuked his two murderous sons. You have troubled me to make me distinct among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed. I and my house. 34 verse 30. Even at this late stage in Jacob's life, we sadly note, he expresses no sorrow over the defilement of his only daughter, Donna. His voice Forces no regrets over an entire town being exterminated. He apparently is unconcerned about God's feelings about all this. His main, perhaps only concern is that he, he be hurt because of his sons. He assumes no personal responsibility whatsoever.